value the presence of God and his word and pay attention because signs are for this time also. Let me remember a song years ago. Signs, signs everywhere are signs. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the signs? How many remember that song from years ago? We, we don't rehearse this. <laughs> That's going on right now. And we got to recognize the signs. We need to see the signs that God has shown us. So I just love it how, and this is what I like to share with people that don't know much about the Lord, about how the prophecies in the Old Testament were fulfilled. Between three and 400 prophecies were fulfilled through Christ. Just, just about Christ. There were many more it's than that. It's astounding to me that Jews aren't, well, they are getting saved. They are coming to know Jesus, the Messiah. Because if you knew the scriptures in the Old Testament, you'd see the prophecies fulfilled in Christ. So through prophecy uh, and through Jesus being the light of life, he wants to illuminate and direct our path. So today, even though this is, it's not quite the traditional Christmas service, we want the presence of God, the Spirit of God. We're opening our hearts, Lord. You live inside yes. of us. Illuminate our path. Direct our steps. And we welcome the signs that follow the preaching of the word. So consciously or unconsciously, we are all being pulled into the future by a magnet of prophecy. It's any word or action that influences an outcome. And I like this, that prophecy pours out a form for us to fill. And words are the tools of prophecy. And so we want to, as believers in the family of God, raise our mind to a new level of awareness about the message God is sending to you and through you every day. Right? I may believe that. I mean, if God is talking to you, do you have your antennas up? Like the TV's got to pick up the antenna. And so God is speaking. He's speaking to us, and he's trying to then have us speak so he can speak through us. And I like this passage. We, it, you might be familiar with it, but it's just a reminder. First Timothy, remember Paul said to him, I charge, uh, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage a good warfare. Now, I don't know about you, but in our life, I mean, we've had prophetic words all along, different people. Andrew Womack has prophesied over us. And, you know, it just makes an impact. It's so, I love that, the prophetic ministry, because it's so, um, God knows your number. You know, God knows your address. And I love that God is that personal, and he has a plan and a destiny for each of us. And you've so, been very good about writing them down even from years past. And nowadays we have tape recorders and ways to hear them again. Because I like to go over them and see, this is important. You know, some people just relegate prophetic words and say, oh, well, I'm putting that on the shelf, and we'll see if that comes to pass. Don't be, don't be dumb like Katie Klops, who... Breaks her teeth on tying knots. This is a book that we had as a little kid. The point I'm trying to make to you is don't do something so stupid like you get a word and say, let's just see if that happens. No, you are in partners when that word happens. And so it's important to war with those, like, like Paul said to Timothy, to, to get them out and rehearse them. And if you agree with the word, if it bears witness, that is what from the Spirit of God, then you you need to speak them out and say, I believe this because prophecy, I agree with that. yeah, prophecy needs to be spoken. And then imagine what God's doing. Don't try to make things happen. That's where we get in error. But we can see what God's saying. God, I receive that. Thank you for it. And why is prophecy so important to human beings? We are the only species on earth that can exist in the present while simultaneously worrying about the future. And this is the reason, one of the reasons why prophecy is important. You're combating the worry and the anxiety and the fear that's trying to come against us. We need to pull the plug on the anxiety and the fretting. And we all deal with it. And I understand it, but I'm saying it's not helping us. And, of course, you're not contributing to the word coming to pass. So God wants to bring light on the subject. You know, the next part here... To sum up the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth, 
I, I just, in Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, the story starts there. And just to let you know, just kind of a little background, Zacharias was a priest, and he was preparing to serve. You know, he served as a priest under the priestly order of Abiah. And his wife was, uh, uh, his wife was Mary's cousin, also from the family of a priest, direct descendant of Aaron. You know, Aaron back with Moses. And, and so God's hooked these two up. And so they were old and barren. And so Zacharias is getting ready. They, they shook lots, you know, and he was the one now that was going to be bringing the incense offering. So he gets ready to go do that. He's bringing the incense offering. The people are, are outside, you know, praying, ready for the incense to go up. And they're kind of wondering what's going on out there. This, you know, where, where's Zach? And so an angel shows up and starts talking to him about uh, by grace, you're going to receive a baby. We've heard your prayers in heaven. So we've got the angel Gabriel showing up, bringing this word because God had heard their prayers that they were looking for a baby. Well, Zacharias, instead of just saying, thank you, Lord, kind of like Mary, Mary asked a question because she didn't understand how it was going to happen. Zach kind of put a little bit more, how can that happen? I'm too old. My wife's too old. You know, this isn't. So he was in doubt. So a sign was the angel said, okay, because that, you're not believing this, we're going to make you mute, mute for a season. So Zacharias couldn't talk. His wife did get pregnant, and until the day that his wife had the baby and they were getting ready to name the baby, they were trying to name it, and she says, no, it's to be John. And they went to Zacharias, and they said, what do you say? And he wrote down the word John, and as soon as he wrote it down, he could speak again. Woo. And then he started prophesying of what was getting ready to happen. And before we read that prophecy, I just wanted to give you a little, a little more of this background. Um, I'm looking at this out of the Passion, but there's some great footnotes, and it says, uh, according to uh, the scriptures, there, there were about 20,000 priests in Christ's time. And no priest would ever offer incense more than once. This was a once-in-a-lifetime moment for him. The burning of incense before the Lord was done twice daily, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. So that's interesting that he, this, is, this is so significant because here he is offering incense, this once-in-a-lifetime chance, and the angel shows up to tell him their prayer's been answered. And in the Passion Translation, it said, Zechariah asked the angel, how do you expect me to believe this? I'm an old man. My wife's too old to give me a child. What sign can you give me to prove this will happen? Sound like a real believer. In what that and so like. because of him responding that way, the angel said, well, the angel said to him, I'm Gabriel. I stand beside God himself. He sent me to announce to you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe my words. Don't be one of those people. You'll be stricken silent and unable to speak until the day my words have been fulfilled. At their appointed time and a child is born to you, this will be your sound. So <laughs> this will be your sign. So <laughs> this, 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 mm, is, this mm. is his sign, the sign of silence. Where they came we should all get song. the sign of silence till the word of the Lord comes to pass. <laughs> the sounds of silence. That's where they <laughs> it's came the up with sign. that song. Some of you got it. <laughs> but I like this too. This is interesting. Um, Elizabeth means, and that's, you know, John the Baptist's mother. Her name means oath or covenant of God. Zechariah's name means God has remembered. Thank you. And John, John's name means God is gracious. And so this is what's cool about it to me because when Zechariah begins to prophesy in verse 67, I'll read this prophecy to you. It's, uh, and you, I think it's up there, yeah. So now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit. This is after the birth of John. And he prophesied, saying... Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies 
and the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath, remember Elizabeth's name means the oath, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, speaking to John the Baptist, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Oh, he's prophesying the new covenant. Wow. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation in Israel. You know, I just see this, and I, I see that these were people that responded to God's word finally so that God could bring forth his son Jesus. You know, remember we talked about the 300 plus prophecies and the thousands of years it took. God is using people just like you to impress your heart of his word, and then to have you speak that out. You know, every one of you can be walking in God's blessings by what you speak out. You know, you can start speaking out your future of what God has called you to do and impressed you to do. Don't wait for the signs to happen. Let the signs be the confirmation of what you already believe and you're speaking out. You know, it's interesting yeah, too. Can we look at that just a second? Yes, this says the prophetic timeline. And I want you to see this. You know, we had Adam, 4,000 B.C. Then Noah came along in that process. Then Abraham was involved in that with his sacrifice. Uh, Moses, David, Jesus, and then see now ourselves. Somebody say ourselves. See, God sent promises, fulfilled it by Jesus, and there's more to come through the Holy Ghost through you. You know, in this... Uh... These footnotes, it's so beautiful. Um, it says, Zechariah asked for a sign rather than believing the word, and he was given the sign of silence. Unbelief will keep us, a, keeps a priest from speaking until faith arises. This is the first message spoken from heaven in more than 400 years, and the last person before Zechariah to receive a message given by angels was also named Zacharias was back in Zechariah 1.6, which I think is interesting. But so this is beautiful because even in this prophecy that John the Bapt or that Zacharias gave, he was quoting from the scriptures in Isaiah, where Isaiah said in chapter 9, verse 2 through 6, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They re rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government, there will be no right. end. Of government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward and forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Of his government, there shall be no end. There's a lot of squirrely things going on with governments around the world. I mean, our own right now. And when it says, of his government, there shall be no end, I believe the governments that are yielding to the Spirit of God through Jesus, those governments are going to prosper. I believe God's doing that right now. By Even you saw where our own president spoke forth, the Savior it comes, preaching the gospel using his platform. I believe God wants to prosper all those that acknowledge him in these days, those that are against him and aren't acknowledging him. I believe those governments aren't going to stand in these last days. One of the other amazing things that stood out to me as I read in Luke 1 was about how the angel said about your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you're to name him John, but that uh, 
he will be one of the great ones in the sight of God and that he would be filled with the Holy Spirit even while he was in his mother's womb. How many have had that happen? Whoa. Come on. That is astounding. And then you know the Baby, story. Baby, get filled. Receive the Holy Spirit. You know the story that when um, Mary came to see her aunt, that when she walked into the house, the baby leaped in her mother's womb. Wow, that is incredible. Even the to... baby knew that the king of kings yes. had come into the room. And that just makes me feel like we need to be so much more sensitive to the spirit of God and what's happening in our midst. And sometimes we're just oblivious and we do that because we've hardened our heart and just filled it, distracted ourselves with so much stuff. We're missing the things of the Spirit that God wants us to tune into. And uh, as soon as this happened where um, Mary came into Elizabeth's sight, it said, uh, arriving at their home, Mary entered the house and greeted her. At the moment she heard her voice, the baby within Elizabeth jumped and kicked, and suddenly Elizabeth was was filled to overflowing with the Spirit, and with a loud voice, she prophesied with power. And she starts speaking this prophecy over Mary and her life. And then there's a song there that Mary returns, a prophetic song Mary sings. You need to read the whole thing out of Luke chapter 1. It's just beautiful. And it says that mercy kisses all his godly lovers from one generation to the next mighty power flows from him to scatter those who walk in pride powerful princes he tears from their thrones this is a prophetic song mary's singing about jesus and what was going to happen through her life through her son it's just incredible and so, then it says this those who hunger for him will always be filled but the smug and the self-satisfied, he will send away empty. Uh-oh. Don't bad. be smug. Come it's on. just a beautiful prophetic picture. But then when we go into where the, um, the shepherds are in the country, you want to yeah, read let's some look of at that. that. This kind of brings on the scene of what God is trying to do with them in the manger. And, and let me understand, make it clear, we don't believe his birth actually happened right, you know, December the 25th, or do we believe that the uh, wise men that came, came at the time of his birth? You know, this has been the tradition that most of us have seen, but it doesn't matter. This is still God bringing his son on the earth. So it says here, uh, now Luke 2, 8, now there were some, excuse me, th there were in the same country shepherds living in the fields, another one says abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were, one says sore afraid, another one says greatly afraid. How many have been sore afraid before? <laughs> and the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. How many know it's good when an angel shows up and says, fear not, do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good tidings here. That's a good sign. Most people don't know how to, they freak out when an angel shows up. We've had a few experiences of, we'll just say spiritual, it could have been angels, possibly angels. Years ago, we were singing a Christmas song back in here with the choir, and all of a sudden, all these voices that were much larger than the crew we had started singing. I think we were saying, oh, come let us adore him. And all of a sudden, this magnification of this started going, and we're all looking around. Where is this coming from? And so we just thank God. And then we tried to make it happen the next week, and we couldn't. How many know when you try to reproduce something? Where are those things at now? Show up. You want to go ahead and read? Go ahead. Where are you? Right there. Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign, sign. Come on, another sign, sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, earth peace. goodwill toward men. 
So listen to this about the sign. I was looking this up because I thought this was so beautiful. In the Passion, it says, you'll recognize him by this miracle sign. You'll find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a feeding trough. So listen to this. A baby lying in a feeding trough where animals were kept nearby, wrapped in strips of cloths, became a sign of the man Savior's life on earth. He entered the world as a lowly baby, though he's the mighty God. He lived a life on earth in gentleness before all. The shepherds that night were possibly near Bethlehem at Migdal, the watchtower of the flock. This would fulfill both prophecies of Micah 5, 2, and 4, 8. So this is an Old Testament prophet. Micah had prophesied this. Which say to you, he will come, your dominion kingdom from old will arrive. It was at this lower floor of the watchtower that the birthing of Passover lambs would take place. Selected ewes were about to give birth and they were brought there, this very spot. After the birth of the lambs, the priestly shepherds would wrap the lambs in cloth and lay them in a manger lined with soft hay to prevent them from hurting themselves. For Passover lambs must be unblemished with no bruise or broken bone. The miracle sign for these priestly shepherds would be a baby boy lying where the Passover lamb should be in a manger wrapped in strips of cloth. It was at the cradle of Jesus Christ that the kingdom from ancient times arrived on earth. You know, what we've got to see, this is what a typical manger looked like that the baby was laid in. And what we've got to understand is Jesus was brought, laid in this, and then we've got another scene of Jesus' tomb. Let's look at that tomb. How many know that Jesus was born to die? He was brought in this thing. And, and even being brought in this place where a lamb was going to be a sacrifice was laid in that very manger probably. And then Jesus was. How many know the prophetic of what God did was laid out so well that we couldn't miss this? That Jesus was laid there and he was going to be sacrificed. Can you imagine a mom knowing that my son's going to be sacrificed and she's laying him in that same place that a lamb that was going to be sacrificed was? In verse 19, it says, So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that's come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And that's what I, I wanted to just say. God brings his word to pass. And so we need to have, you know, we slap ourselves. God, you're bringing your word to pass in my life. And I have an expectation. The Lord makes things known to us. He illuminates things to us every day. And it just helped me to want to open my heart to receive with more greater expectation his counsel, his wisdom, his truth on a daily basis. Come on. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness didn't comprehend it. Imagine walking blindfolded through an unfamiliar room. Can you imagine that? Somebody lets you in this room of their house and you don't know the room so they blindfold you. And you know that it's almost impossible to navigate from one side to the other without a single scratch, bump, or bruise. Life is a room that we are not able to easily navigate. How many would say that there's some challenges in this thing called life without light? But now imagine walking through that same room with the blindfold off, and light shining everywhere, eliminating all of the shadows and helping you to avoid the chaos and the hurt that would have happened. You have been walking blindly in the dark. I just want to see this. I was just seeing this the other day. How many know that when you're in a dark room, it doesn't take much light to illuminate? And I got these little things that are about the size of a quarter with a light on them about the size of a BB. And just that little bit, you can see that, right? Just a little bit of light, but in a dark room, it, it illuminates. It was how, helping us read the tiny print. <laughs> how many know, and this is just a little bitty tiny thing, but look how bright it gets. Now, God 
through His Spirit, is trying to illuminate to you and through you. Somebody say, to me. To me. And through me. And through me. And so others can see this. He's the light of the world. And today, He uses us to hold up that light so others can see. This is the Passion Translation out of John 1. It says, life came into being because of Him. For his life is light for all humanity. And this living expression is the light that bursts through gloom. Come on. You guys, I'm going to comment on this. I'm going to hold off. The light that darkness could not diminish. Then suddenly a man appeared who was sent from God, a messenger named John. For he came to be a witness to point the way to the light of life and to help everyone believe. You know... You know, you and I know, so many people are struggling with depression. You know this, you know. We have the light of life. We are anointed. We are to be the ones that are bringing life. This light that we have, it bursts through gloom. I'm telling you, you are empowered and anointed to burst through gloom. The people around you that are fighting suicidal thoughts and and all the thing that the fears and all that, we have the light of life that's going to bust through this. Amen. The scripture Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We must shine now. Come on. You're going to have the light. This is John 12, 35. You're going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark doesn't know where they're going. we got to be the light. I want to be in the light like you are in the light. I want to shine like stars up in the heaven. I remember that song from DC Talk years ago. I want us to see this as that light came to shine light on all of us to let him know who he was and that he was the Savior of the world, and now we got the Savior of the world. Now his Spirit lives in me. Will I let that light so shine that men will glorify our Father in heaven? Go ahead and read that last scripture. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. Who's the light of the world? A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. And I'm thinking as I say that, it just comes to me. All of you are filled with different gifts. You know, some are are speaking gifts or teaching gifts. Some are helps and support. And as we don't squish or hide our gifts and our light, we use it. We're going to be busting through the gloom because your gift is valuable and important. And without you using your gift... Someone's suffering. And so we've got to be activated and encouraged to be bold. Stir yourself up in the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Spirit today to flow in your gift. The rest of the scripture says, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light, Shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And notice it said in the house. So I'm going to say in your house, with your family, with your children or grandchildren or relatives or friends that come to your house. Let your light shine. Start in the house. Come on. Are we going to do that? And so in light of saying that, I make a choice to let that light shine. All I got to do is let it up. I, I got to shut down how I feel sometimes. Come on. I, if you feel anxious, if you feel fearful, if you feel angry at somebody, that's not a light you want to let shine. I've got to daily let that word go in me and then learn how to let the Holy Spirit, whenever it's now, now come forth and, and yield. And, even and he, when I don't feel like it. Even, when, even if you are angry, because we all have been that way, Denise, just, it's not true. Just go, go back and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just practice. I'm sorry for that. Is that an that. apology? <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and then you came on the inside of us, all that reached out to you, God, you came right in. And I thank you, God, as we're each holding a candle that represents this light. I pray that we let our light so shine before men that it will glorify you, Father, who is in heaven. God, I pray for people just daily allowing that light to shine. God, I thank you for doing that. Wherever we are, wherever we go, whatever we do, even around our own families this Christmas holiday. Father, I thank you for that light that's in us. And we choose now to let it come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you.